Hey guys, what's up? This is Behind Relationship Goals. I'm Fofo. And I'm Bones. It's another podcast Yay. and Soba is alive. Hopefully she stays awake for the rest of the podcast or not. I like it when she's chill and she's just lying down on us. I guess big shout out to everybody who has been watching and supporting the podcast because we have been getting so many comments from you guys. As of this shooting, we have the baby episode out and we have the money episode out and you guys have given us so much more insight and so much good feedback and comments that it really makes me happy because like I said, we pour our hearts and souls into these episodes yeah. and so many of our stories. And we've been getting a lot of emails as well from the listeners of the podcast. So thank you so much for reaching out to us and telling us how much you love the podcast. Some people are saying, oh, can you probably talk about this and that? And we hear you guys. Don't you worry. If you guys want to send an email to us, that's behindrelationshipgoals at gmail.com. So before we get into the actual episode, we have so many plans for this podcast. As you can see, we're trying to level up our set design here yeah. so we Love are props and art house. department for this so we put nice flowers on the right <laughs> side flowers on the left side we're trying to think about getting another camera so we have a nice tight shot into yeah. us so you can really see those tears roll down Bonizi's eyes whenever she cries ha, ha, every ha. episode <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's move on to the podcast and the topic for today is Something to do with fire. Oh, what about fire? The fire represents the relationship. And sometimes that fire dwindles Wait, down. wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What? The fire represents the relationship? Or does it represent the love of the relationship? <laughs> or does it represent the passion in the relationship? I think it'll be the love. I am your passion, no? Maybe that's a different episode, <laughs> lol. <laughs> An episode not on the podcast, just kidding. Gotcha. The fire, okay? So that represents the love in the relationship. And sometimes that fire <laughs> dwindles down. And just so you guys know, Fofo is seriously laughing at me. Why don't you continue? She wasn't ready for that. She wasn't ready for my question. <laughs> but anyway, you know what? Now that I think about it and fire, there are ebbs and flows to the fire, meaning it's getting bigger and smaller. I mean, just uh, the natural state yeah. of fire is constantly moving. Moving. That's how it is with love and relationships. Yeah. You're never in a constant state. It's always a state of fluctuation of, oh, I love you so much now. And then, and the, then next the next time day, you're, you're like, like Ugh, I think meh. I love you a little less. And then the next week, hey, I do not love you at all. And then it just changes, and then it repeats, and then it goes crazy. It's like a roller coaster, kumbaga. so my ups and downs. And no, then my it's like fire. I'm just saying the roller coaster of emotions also. <laughs> okay, but I thought we were using fire. <laughs> I don't know. So it's love a roller coaster or fire? It could be both. But for the sake of this episode, we're sticking to fire, Bonizi. Fire, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bonizi is so magulo today. All right. So let's talk about the fire in a relationship. And people are always wondering, especially if you've been in a relationship for a long time, how do you keep the fire burning? Oh, are you asking me? Yes. How do you keep the fire burning? I'm wondering now if I've ever actively thought about adding fuel to that fire or keeping it burning. And I don't think I really have, to be honest okay. with you. Okay. We've been lucky in that sense that we haven't had to look for that. And that hasn't been my fear, at least. I'm curious about you, though. I, like, I'm throwing the question back at you. Have you ever woken up and thought, you know what? I think I need to do something to spice up the fire with Fofo and Bonizi. Well, if there's a honeymoon, you know, moment in relationships, definitely we've been in that honeymoon stage for 10 years. <laughs> oh, you think so? I think so. Like, I think we had like a really killing time and we still have our moments, but I think the fire is really burning. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect how you said that. Just because I say that I never actively had to act on keeping the fire burning doesn't mean that we were always on a high. Because like I said, you know, the fire of love sounds so <laughs> cheesy. is always changing. So for me and Bonizi, we've always had ups and downs. And we've had downs that lasted for a while. We've had ups that also lasted for quite mm -hmm. a while. In the first several years, first maybe one, two, three, four years of our relationship, what would we do that would stoke that fire? 
I remember when we were still dating, one of the things that we would always do is that we stopped going to like bars for a bit. Uh-huh. And you would come over to my house probably in like the after maybe three in the afternoon. So instead of us going out and partying, Mikael would bring over like soda and this liquor that tasted like coconut. I forgot the name of it. Oh yeah. Um Malibu. Yeah. So we would have like Coke Malibu and then we would just be in the dining room talking and then mom would make us chica like sometimes. I do remember and that. we'd just do that because it was a time when we were reminiscing about Boracay. And I've been to Boracay like a couple of times. You had like your college thing there. I had there. my own Boracay stories so to tell you. So when, when we would drink this Coke Malibu, like it would really bring back memories of us like just being on the beach, you know, just enjoying like the sun. And that was our way of reminiscing even though we weren't at the beach. A lot of the conversations we had over that Malibu Coke was about music mm-hmm. because we would sound trip a lot yeah. when we would do that. So this would be at night all the time, like towards no, the end, yeah. night, like 8, 9, No, 10 you would PM. come over in the afternoon and then hanggang later, you would stay. No, but we would start drinking the Malibu Coke at night yeah, usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Mampa. Yeah, with her mom, <laughs> with Mama V. We would talk about music and the two artists that I remember would pop up a lot would be Temper Trap, and the XX. Oh, I introduced so just, the XX to you. Exactly. So just imagine that you have your Malibu Coke and you're sitting in a dimly lit dining room with the XX and Temper Trap playing. For those who have not been able to listen to uh-huh. them, we're introducing these artists to you guys. Such vibey music. Just mm-hmm. really vibey music to be able to set the tone and set the mood for nice, fun conversation and just a happy night. Oh, that's so nice. I remember it was just so much fun. Okay, my turn. It's my turn. turn. If that was what made, you know, us kilig, mm-hmm. if that's what stoked our fire back then. For me, what I remember was when we would hang out either in my place or in her place, and it would be like 12 midnight, maybe we were playing some games or watching a movie, and then biglang gugutumin kami. You know, the midnight snack hunger pangs. Wait, and hindi lang siya snack ha? Like, these were like full meals. Oh yeah, we would go meals. all out. Like, so, kaon na kaon. Ganun. There were three go-to dishes that we would always order out because we wouldn't cook as much. So the first dish that I remembered was Army Navy's breakfast burrito. Oh, specifically, sarap. longanisa with cheese breakfast burrito and steak with cheese breakfast and burrito. And we have that. Para we could have uh, no, a slice of each. Yeah, but I think there were times that I would have one steak and one longanisa just to myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was crazy. And those those burritos were deadly. I'd say like 800 calories so in one though. burrito at least. And then we sometimes we get like the fries and the soup. Yeah, I actually have a photo of Bonizi eating the second dish that we would eat. Jollibee Chicken Joy. Easy. I would get three, four-piece Jollibee Chicken Joy <laughs> With two uh, cups of rice or three cups of rice, usually two naman. No, I remember my go-to order. My go-to order before was one piece chicken joy. I would get a yum burger with cheese. I would get the jolly hot dog. And then I would get fries on a sundae. That would yes. be my meal. Bonizi ah, loves jolly fries. Love, oh. And tidbit, I don't like french fries. Yeah, he doesn't eat French fries. Surprise. He I, doesn't. I just, it's just not my thing. Like I've, before, I would offer it to him. He's like, do you want fries? And he'd just be like, no, every single time. And, and then one time I was like, what do you have with fries? Why are you so mad at them? Yeah, no, I'm not mad at them. No, I just no, no, don't find just, them very, f- I don't find them satisfying, satisfying yeah. at all. I don't know why. But Even uh, with Sunday. Uh, it's just fun. Like, wala lang, pakit ka lang. Oh, I dipped my French fries in Sunday. I love but French fries. I could eat like 10 French fries at once. I don't find it satisfying <laughs> at all. But yeah, I even have a photo. I don't know if I can find it, but I have a photo of Bonizi munching on her chicken joy, <laughs> sitting on the floor and using her computer chair as a table. Do you remember that photo? I remember that photo. And then I was surrounded by all the food that I ordered. And then the last one, the one thing that we cooked, which is barely cooking, it was instant mac and cheese from Kraft. And then we ng tuna. tuna. And Ooh. we would just eat that. She introduced that to me. Oh, and no, that wasn't the only thing. We'd put that in bread. Pa. And so good. It was just so good. It was just like carbs on carbs. I will not blame any of you if you guys get hungry listening to this podcast. Because that usually is what happens when you talk about really, really yummy food. Fofo, there's another one. Go. Don't you remember? Pancit Canton. In bread. Not as much. For me, I don't have as many memories of that. I think that's... Okay, that's probably me and my siblings. Yeah, that's probably you and your siblings. Maybe I had that like once or twice. Yeah. 
but not a lot at okay, all. Okay. It was really those three. And those were really our bonding moments. Like even 10 years later, that's exactly what I remember when you say, what were those moments of bonding with yeah. you? And it was those. You're just literally having fun. You're kind of like just goofing around with one another. And I think food was really a bonding like thing for us before. I remember when... I was making you lande. <laughs> and then I was at Adrian's house and I said, Aids, text mo si, ano, si Mikael and then tell him to like bring some food over for us. Just do a drive through Remember that? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. That was super I do fun. remember that. Was that was super killing. I guess for the first part, there was no, it, it wasn't about keeping the fire alive. Yeah. It was literally every moment that we would see each other. We're like throwing gasoline yeah. into the fire. Yeah. So not much to talk about there in terms of the topic that we're trying to discuss. So I guess moving on. On. Food was the fuel to our fire. Focal. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I wonder if we developed anything out of those, you know, those habits, those relationship habits that we had. Did we develop any clinginess? What do you think? Okay, initially, Mikael was the more, I would say, quote unquote, clingy. Like, what really? No, 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 not clingy in that sense. But you were very like, parang touchy. Hey. Sorry, okay. wrong word. Okay. Wrong word. Not clingy. Mikael was the more touchy kind of person. So he would give a lot of hugs. I was physically clingy. That's what you mean. Yes, yes. He wanted to hold my hand all the time. I wasn't used to that at first. And then Mikael taught me how to be more affectionate, I would say, in the beginning. Because I was very like ice queen, kind of cold. Like, yeah, I like you. Let's hang out. But... I don't know like how clingy I am as a person. And then eventually, Fofo, I became super clingy with you. Do you remember? I became clingy to the point na I would fix my schedule around yours. So let's say I wanted to go out and like do something, but you were going to do something else. I'd cancel what I was going to do initially. So if you were to ask me that question, Bonizi is the one who became clingy. I became clingy. You became too clingy. So yeah. it, the very cliche, the cliche definition of clingy where yun nga, sabi mo nga, you were canceling everything and you just wanted to kind of like do everything make with our you. relationship your world. Yeah, I no, I literally made you my world. Everything that you did, I followed. That everything that so you liked... I liked, but I liked them for the wrong reasons. Yeah, and but this didn't last very long. Okay, you know what? I don't have a very clear memory of this time because it didn't last very long. It was a very crucial point in our relationship because I remember that you told Adrian and Jana, you had a conversation with them that they specifically told me and they were like, Mikael feels you're, you know, making all him your world oh okay this is what i told her best friends at that time i told them that you know what bonizi and i are going through a really rough patch and i think the biggest reason for that is because she's sacrificing herself her own personal growth to cater to what you want for our relationship and that didn't sit well with me because it was always my belief that i wanted bonizi to grow as a person as an individual yeah independently and not sacrifice that just for the sake of the relationship because I didn't feel that that worked or that made for a good relationship in my mind. Yeah, and at that time, you felt that parang luge in the long run because I wouldn't be able to support you if something bad happened to you. Or yeah. like if you were at a low point because I wasn't strong independently. Like mm-hmm. I was depending on you at this moment. Yeah. And then what happened there, the next level was, Mikael talked to my best friends about this. Of course, they told me. But what didn't sit well with Mikael is that I didn't talk to him about this. I didn't confront him na I knew about how he was feeling. I just let it slide under the rug. And okay, and then what happened? I'm sorry, I, I don't remember this part of our relationship. Oh, really? I mean, no, I remember the broad strokes, but the details, I don't. We talked about it, but it was a while, like a couple of months after you had talked to my best friends. You said, oh, so you knew all this time that I had these feelings about our relationship and about you, and you didn't even talk to me about it. And it was actually a really rough patch. Now, I felt like we were going to break up. True. I would say that that point was the closest to us breaking up ever. Yeah, because you couldn't see me as... I couldn't see you as a person I wanted to be with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm, yes. I'm remembering some details now. Yes. And I remember how I felt. I, I, I saw Bonizia as someone in the future who I didn't want to be with because she wasn't growing independently or as an individual. Mm-hmm. And why would I want to be with someone who 
doesn't want to grow as an individual. Or somebody that doesn't even know who they are as a person yeah. or what they like. That was just my thing. I, I, that's not who I wanted. And mm-hmm. that's not the relationship I wanted to be in. Eventually, you know, we got over this patch. Like, we talked about it. There was a lot of crying going on, like, during these times. A lot of confusion on my part. Now, how do I strip away from being so dependent of somebody that I love? And in the back of my head, I was thinking, okay, I'm doing this because I love him and because I want to do everything that he likes. But in the end, it turned out that he couldn't see me as, you know, the Megan that he saw when we were dating, like I was a different person. I wasn't, you know, showing my interest in the things that I actually liked. And I was just conforming to the person that you were. So I had to adjust big time and I had to make a conscious effort to not make Mikael my world. And if I wanted to do something, even though Mikael didn't want to do it, I just had to go ahead and go for it. Yeah, I guess if I were to summarize what you were saying and kind of like in a relationship, I feel like there are three entities. So okay. there's two individuals, that's mm-hmm. you and me, and then the relationship. I see those things as three separate entities yeah. that you have to take care of. And any time that you lose sight of taking care of any one of those entities, then you kind of ruin the balance. Yeah. What happened with us was that you were putting all your energy towards just the relationship yeah. entity. And I, I guess your about own myself. circle was shrinking. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want that to happen. I think for us to grow, I think all those entities need to grow and expand and just take in more experiences and work on themselves. So does that make sense? Yeah, I think it also came to a point because that I wasn't seeing friends. I wasn't hanging out with my family enough. It was just you, 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 yeah, you. I didn't yeah. even have like do anything for myself. Like I wasn't working out. I wasn't, you know, like doing things that I like, like getting my nails done because Mikael didn't like it. Oh like, my God, here's an example. Here's an example. So I was still working on myself. I was still trying to go to acting workshops at that time. This was early on, like first five years together, first three years together even. I was still enjoying myself. I would play basketball. Uh, I would play a lot of Dota at that time. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. But for Bonizi, I remember this one time I went to the gym and she was doing something and all she did was wait for me. And because I, when I went back, she was in the exact same spot. I asked her what she did and she said she did nothing. I was like, in my head, of course, I didn't show you my, yeah, yeah, yeah. my frustration. frustration initially. But over time, when I would look back, I was like, wow, did she not do anything? Like she could have done stuff. She could have worked out herself. She could have done something else. Yeah. She could have gone out with her friends if she wanted to. So there were those small moments that eventually built up to my frustration. eventual frustration. Yeah, because I think at the back of your head, you're like, she's holding herself back because she doesn't want to upset me. But at the same time, you felt that you were holding me back because you didn't know how to like go about it also yeah i didn't know how to how to motivate you to hey dude it's not about just the relationship yeah. it's about you so forget about me focus forget on about yourself. the relationship focus on yourself dude yeah okay so that was the whole frustration part how did we move on from this we really spoke about it and i guess there were so many points where i tried talking to your friends mm-hmm. we tried talking to one another we had low lows at that time we had arguments we had fights we had sad moments and it was really just us talking through it and being able to express ourselves because now we can clearly say what the problems were and what the solutions were to that but in the moment oh everything was a muddled mess even my thoughts and my feelings i was like why do i feel this way about her and like at the back of your head you're like i love this person but there's something wrong yeah like parang there's like a hole in my heart parang ganun yung nararamdaman mo it took a lot of um contemplation with myself and with bonizi a lot of talking mm-hmm. and just a lot of honesty and kind of getting there and really persevering through it because there were times that we would talk and parang i would try to explain myself but you wouldn't understand yeah or you would try to explain yourself and I wouldn't understand what you're saying either. That was really frustrating. And I'm sh- I think that I believe that happens all the time to people. Yeah. Like, At least I'm assuming. No, no, no. It does happen. I mean, even between friends and family, it happens. Nah, you don't understand each other's thought process. It takes time to get to a point where, ah, na tayo. And you know what? In relation to our topic, this was the time that I, our fire, I guess, was the smallest, right? Yeah. 
And I think us, whenever we would talk and whenever we would try to find middle ground or just even just a little bit of progress, some semblance of progress, I think that was us trying to add fuel to the fire. Yung wala ka ng gasolina, yung puro drops na lang, pero sinisimot mo na lang uh-huh. para lang medyo lumaki ulit. Yung scraps na lang. Yeah, yeah. Ituloy mo, baka naman lumiyab pa yung fire. Yeah, naman. I'm really liking this fire analogy. This is <laughs> Now like, you like this it. This is working for it. Hey, you were turning it into a roller coaster a while ago. <laughs> But during our lowest of lows, I think th- being able to converse and persevere through frustrations That was our way of keeping the fire burning. So what about like little moments? Let's say na, because that was a really big and heavy moment for us. But what about times where, you know, nag-away tayo ng konti? How do we keep the fire burning or how do we, you know, spark the love back again from being angry? Oh, I don't know. Because before I used to fight Bonizi on purpose to spark the he fire. He would. He would. Okay. So before... I would give okay. her so much trouble. Before, I couldn't understand Mikael because I'm like, we're in such a good place. Why is he fighting me? Like, I didn't understand. Like, he would just like say something out of the blue, like so snarky. And then, yun pala, what he was doing was he was just trying to get a reaction out of me. And because I wasn't reacting and because I was so confused, he would get even more frustrated. So I'm like... Can you just not fight me, like, for fun? Okay, let me just lay down the groundwork of th- these times. <laughs> these fights or these these fights that I would try to spark weren't serious fights. Yeah, they were They okay. were like joke time. Joke time joke time fights na medyo may konting irritation na lumalabas. Paminsan-minsan. Bully effect, ganon. But, but the thing is, for me kasi, there were times that we would have such great stretches Mm-mm. and I would just feel kind of like adventurous. Naughty. Yeah, I would, I would feel naughty, but... But here's the thing. Sometimes that naughty would actually turn into a real issue because sometimes I know that I would go a bit overboard with my naughtiness mm-hmm. and trying to stoke, you know, the the, the arguments Poke between the us. fire. But what I would see sometimes with Bones was that she would not confront a problem even though I was being too yeah. naughty. And like if it was, was too much, like if I felt na parang krabe naman to, but I wouldn't tell him that she wouldn't call me out. I would, I was hurt, or that I felt like he was, you know, you know, going over the line. So but na lang in time, I would catch myself. I'm like, hey Bones, dude, I was too much back then. Like you yeah. should have called me out. I wouldn't have known. So erte na lang parang I realized it like later on. I think at the back of my head, I was scared that you would get angry or I was afraid of your reaction. So that was my hesitation. That's why I wasn't saying anything. And then I realized later on that it wasn't healthy for our relationship and that you would get even more aggravated. And at the same time, like, why am I allowing myself to be a doormat? I like your analogies. Yeah, I, Bones the doormat. If I'm going to allow myself in my relationship with Mikael, Like that, I'm a doormat. Paano pa kaya? Like in the real world, is am I gonna allow other people to step on me? Of course, I don't want that. So I had to fix myself in the closest relationship that I had, which is with yeah. you. Because our relationship was the most high stakes relationship we had. That was the most important relationship to us at that point and up until now. Mm-hmm. So if you couldn't fight for that and do the right thing, and just you because you were just scared of you know confrontation, then I guess we weren't. We weren't doing something right. Actually, Mikael always calls me out when he doesn't like what I do. When he feels like I'm stepping over the line, na hindi tama yung ginagawa ko. Pinagsasabihan niya talaga ako. Do you think that I do the same for you, Fofo? Now. Now? Oh yeah, no. Night and day. Night and day. So if you were like the level one, you're, you're like a level 58 now. Whoa. Yeah, Why? Out of 100, bato. Oh, no. Like, just like times 58. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, no, no. Sorry. Not out of anything, but like 58 times more. So, I'm just trying to like put the level to it. Okay. Mababa ba yung naisip mo? Yeah, it was like 1 to 10. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> On a level of 1 to 10, what is it? Okay. You've, you, you've gone up many, many times. Okay. Exponentially. Thank you. Okay. You've gotten exponentially better, Bonizi. Good job. Thanks. But there's always room to grow, even for myself. Was there any 
point of realization for you? It was like a solo moment where you were just contemplating things and talking to yourself and thinking. And for me, because I've had moments like that, right? Made cuenta naman eh, when you were in Miss World and you won. Yeah, yeah. I had my own moments of talking to myself, looking at the mirror <laughs> and everything. But how about you? Did you have any of those? Do you have those? Are you that kind of person when you... I think like because I get so anxious about things, it's always like I'm always having a conversation in my head. So I'll have these pretend scenarios where I'm talking to you and I'm trying to like figure out okay if I say this should I imagine how he'll react and that's why before I would go blank because I was having like conversations in my head with you and I would think of different scenarios of different things that I would say and different reactions that I would have and in the end hindi ko siya nasasabi because it's just like my anxiety building up and, and you forget everything and you I thought forget about. everything because I get so nervous and I'm like <laughs> ah I can't so before I would explain to Fofo that I would go blank but I couldn't explain to him that I was having conversations in my head and I couldn't express myself kasi nandito lang siya sa utak ko. And I think that process just emphasizes the the frustration that both of us had because I could see that Bonizi was trying. So this whole topic and period in our relationship, like I said, it lasted for a while. These solutions, these these problems don't go away in an instant after one amazing conversation. I mean, we've been together for 10 years and we still have problems yeah. like this up it's, until now. It's always a slow grind of improvement. Just getting a bit better day by day. Maybe boom lang ko ka for like a day. Next time, maybe like just for an hour. Next time, maybe just for 30 minutes to the point where you know she's very aware I'm not gonna go blank I know how to confront this problem Mikael and I had a fight two days ago why don't you tell the story actually I don't, I don't completely remember anymore I've forgiven you sorry Okay, so should we not talk about it? Go, no, go, go. I, I don't remember. It's two days ago. I said sorry this, the same day. I was like, just be better. Okay, so Mikael and I have been trying to like work on things like on the back end for work and receivables and stuff. And then he said, like, what's the update about this brand and the things that you need to get from them? And I said, ah, wala pa eh. And then he goes, wala pa? Or did you ask kung meron? I was like, um... Okay. Okay. Let me explain this again. Okay. Uh, just so that it's a bit clearer. There was this thing that Bonizi has been trying to do, and I've been reminding her for the past six months. And all the time, I would ask her during our, our weekly meetings, I would ask her, Have you done this? Have you done this? And she would always say, No, I'm going to do it. No, I'm going to do it. To the point that, you know, we got into an argument already. Right? You need to do this already. You keep on telling me you will. Yeah. We had fought about this already. Nagtampuhan na kami about this. So two days ago, I asked her again, Bonizi, I see this on your list. Please tell me. Have you done this? Have you asked the person the question? Yeah. And she was like, ah, wala pa. And I was like, wala pa, that or doesn't did you ask? answer my question. I said, have you asked the person? And you said, wala pa. But I was like, okay, is it wala pa or you haven't even asked the person? Yeah. Because it's a different thing, the right? Yeah. So she was trying to, you know, go around my question and was trying to indirectly answer it. And I was like, why are you doing that to me? All you have to do is say, I'm sorry, I still haven't done it. She knew kasi that it was going to turn into an argument, pero it became an even bigger argument because she was kind because of Because I like, wasn't being direct. You're kind of lying in a way. No, it was a white lie, definitely. Yeah, it was definitely a lie. And I didn't appreciate it because I was like, you know, just be honest. You made a mistake and own up to it. Yeah, okay, if I get frustrated, rightfully so, because I've been asking you for six months to do it. Actually, I'm not asking you. I'm just reminding you. It's no consequence to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. That thing she has to do doesn't even r relate to me. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just reminding her because she needs to work on it. Yeah. Like, it's your obligation. But, yeah. So, just an example of, you know, up to the year 10, still so many things happening. And we overcame that how? Because, like, I ended up doing this task that I needed to do. You went to like the office area to like decompress. And then later on, I'm very anxious at this point. He goes up to me and kisses my forehead and he's like, Bonizi, be better. And then I wanted to cry. Like my eyes were so teary eyed. He walked away and I was like, Fofo, be better, okay? So what I did was, it was so funny. I actually made my wallpaper. It says be better. And then my checklist, check to-do list. The next one is follow-up emails. 
follow up receivables, work out, post. And the last one is be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. I like that reminder. So yeah, I have a reminder here so that whenever I open my phone, it says be better. What were our go-to things? I mean, if we try to summarize and looking at all those stories, it's so varied. Mm-hmm. No, it's such different situations and such different topics that we try to Big tackle. Big and small also. What insight do you take out of that? Listening to all those stories together from the first few years of our relationship, from the middle of that rough patch of our relationship, to this fight that we just had two days ago? I think like now, now that we're 10 years into the relationship, I think this is the point where people are wondering, what do we do? Like aside from the fights, like put the, putting the fights aside, okay, fights we've aside. been together for so long. What do we do to stay killing? What do we do to, you know, still be madly in love with each other? Like, what are the things that we do? So to answer that question, I have one answer and one follow-up question to that. Okay. Boneasy. In terms of trying to keep the fire alive in terms of kilig, I have never felt a decline there. Yeah, same here. Ever, to be honest with you. Even during the times that we were away from one another, and there have been times I've been away for four weeks from you one time. Months, You've even. You've been away for months from me one time. And this was even after Miss World, yeah, right? I went yeah. to Cambodia and everything. And there are times we're away for a week at a time because of work for me because I go back to those three entities of our individual selves and the relationship. Mm -hmm. During the time that you're away, I really enjoy my time alone. I get excited that, you know, when you say, oh, okay, I'm going to be gone for X amount of uh, days or one week. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I can do all this and all that. Yeah. So I get excited for that. Even if you tell me, Fofo, you know, you can travel, just go to this place if you want to. And I was like, yeah, dude, I'll go on my own. And I'll enjoy it because there are so many ways of experiencing things. You, I can experience things with you, but experiencing things solo is also just another moment yeah. in itself. And I'm always excited for that because we made it a conscious effort, or at least I made it a conscious effort to work on you know myself as well. Yeah in addition to our relationship. So that's what I'm th- feeling. So what? Are, how about you? What do you think? Just to add on to like what you said, I think it's important that we enjoy doing things alone. For our relationship, we have a lot of things that we do together, but we let each other do the things that we love. Like you go and travel. I don't mind that. Like go and have fun. I know that it excites you and all that. You can do that. For me, I like going out and pampering myself and I'm like, Fofo, I'm going to be away from you for like a day. Like I'm just going to like pamper myself. I'm going to go out. I'm going to like get my nails done, get my hair done, go to the spa, like bye. So we have like our own moments. And that seriously takes a day. Oh yeah, it does. It does. Or two, yeah. Depending on the traffic. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we each have things that we enjoy alone and this is where it goes back to that story of individuality when i forgot to love myself and love the things that i really enjoy nawala nun para na our fire got smaller yeah. because we forgot our individual selves like i forgot my individual self and i think that's important in a relationship is you still do the things that you love doing and then you have things that you enjoy with your partner yeah this ecq which has been going on for a week and then there was a the first ecq which went on for how many weeks six weeks yeah. eight weeks even during these times that we're stuck in one place together where we live in a condo there are times that we wake up we'll have our breakfast together and after that, I'll play Dota, Ragnarok, work on the vlog, work on some edits, work on some some meetings yeah. and some brands all to myself for like eight hours straight. And Bonizi is doing the same thing and also playing her games, playing Animal Crossing, yeah. talking to her Discord friends. Even here, we still make it a point to, you know, do things Have on our, our own. Have our own space. Because at the end of the day, we, see, we live together. We're eventually going to relate. Yeah. So it will just happen naturally. I think what's actually been pretty fun for us just recently, as in just a couple of days, is that we've been playing Overcooked together. And it's brought out our competitiveness again. But it's Overcooked too. We play it yeah. around midnight with two of her friends. And we play it till like 2 o'clock in the morning. But it's just something that we've been enjoying for the past like... Four days. Three four days. days. Yeah, three, three days four straight. days. And it's been really fun, really exciting. And I feel like it's, you know, brought a little sp- extra spark into our relationship. It has. It has. And it's such a simple thing, which leads me to my question, actually. Okay. Right now, the fireworks or spark in our fire is 
overcooked, our midnight overcooked session. Okay. But here is my question, Bonizi. I never gave you overly extravagant surprises or gifts. You did one time. Yeah. No, no, no not a lot. Not a lot. It's That's not I, something that you always do. Yeah. yeah, not a lot, definitely. What if I was that kind of guy? And that's okay, right? It's yeah, up to yeah, you. Yeah. It, but what if I was always giving you big, super expensive gifts, taking you to amazing places, na super pricey, super pricey restaurants all the time, like every weekend, yun yung ginagawa ko sa'yo. My question is, do you think that would have raised your standards and would have made you appreciate less when I would give you something smaller and simple? Diba? I mean, is that something that you think could happen if I did that? It's a possibility that if I got used to something so extravagant, if you gave me something like a card, I'd be like, me. Oh, or if I surprised you with like, taho. Na lang. Oh, oh, pero I think it also depends on how we treat the relationship. Like, are we going to treat it in a way na we're focused more on material things? Because if we're focused more on material things, then that's something na. Siguro expected yeah. ko as a partner. If like all of a sudden you give me something completely different, parang I'll be like, what has changed in the relationship? I don't think I'd be turned off because I personally love things like the hall mm. and like fish balls. Pero but, baka ka because it's no, out of the norm. Yeah, it's out of the norm. And it's gotcha. not something that you would normally do. So I wouldn't feel bad or I wouldn't think that you love me less. But I would think na, this is something that he doesn't usually do because... It's not his personality. So what happened? Like, is he a different person? What does he see in our relationship? Mm. So I would question these things rather than not appreciating the smaller things. But I would be more like, what's your intention? That's what I was thinking when we were browsing through our topics mm-hmm. for this podcast. Yeah. And just to, I guess, end that before we get to the loaded game mm-hmm. of the week, yes. unless you have something else to say. Um, <laughs> there are things that I do to create fireworks and sparks. And I think this is something that I consciously do from time to time. So right now, it's overcooked, our midnight sessions. We didn't plan this, it just happened. So there are a lot of spontaneous moments like that. But there are many times where I give Bonizi really small gifts, but I know that she isn't expecting them. So one example, let's say I find something on Instagram and I find a super cute cactus or a plant <laughs> that I feel she's going to like. I order it and then when it comes in, I make sure that I get it first. And on a random day, she might be just sitting down playing her games. I just go up to her and Bonizia, I have a surprise for you. And then out of the blue, I whip out the small tiny cactus <laughs> just to surprise her. And yeah. for me... I like that. And I, I, I feel like it seems like you like those I moments love it. as well. I love it. It makes me so happy. Those small little quirks and moments that I guess I try to, I like capitalizing on. Actually, one, one of those moments that I always like remembering is when I couldn't find my charger because my charger, like I had to take it out when I would like go out and then pagbalik ko ng bahay, like I have to find it in my bag. So one day, Mikael surprised me with a charger that I could just keep in the room beside my bed. So I yeah. was super happy that he gave me a super fast charger. I got her an extra charger because she kept on losing, mi- losing and misplacing. misplacing her charger. So got a charger and put it inside, b- right beside her bed. And I was like, hey, so now you don't have to forget your charger anymore. Yeah, it's so, so killing. Yeah. No, I like that. And I like doing that too. So I like looking for little moments in her own life, in you know the, in the way you go about your yeah. life. And okay, where can I make life a bit happier or funner easier. or easier? Yeah. So yeah, so that's my way. That's my way of doing things. Um, Bonizi has a similar way. She would sometimes cook things for me out of the blue. I think even it's more cooking. She's me. not really a cook she tries i try but she tries I, <laughs> she tries and you know there are valiant efforts i must say i think the most successful thing that i've made is the tuna melt and then the cookies the most recent surprise i gave you was that i saw a really yummy cake on instagram that i yeah. knew she would like and i just bought it and then when it arrived we fought yeah. and then we didn't eat it together so we didn't really get to yeah, enjoy but yeah, it but yeah but i but she tried it after me no it's funny so i, I ate it and then i put it back on the table and no, then you when put it I in left, the ref and yeah. i was like where is it where's the cake so i went in the ref and i was like oh fofo had some already so i got a spoon and i was eating it beside the ref and i was like oh we're fighting but it's so good cake though it's so good <laughs> the cake was so <laughs> I good i wish i could have enjoyed this with him <laughs> cuz i bought it to surprise her and the avocado pie 
So we had a cake and we had an avocado pie. Yeah, they were both super good. I realized that there are times that we kind of like stoke the fire, add a bit of mini mm-hmm. fireworks mm-hmm. to our little bonfire of love. Bonfire of love. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so cheesy. But now... But I yeah, th- I think now we get to... The Loaded Game of the Week. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so we decided now uh, we'll do like a little game. It's fast talk, I would say. I don't think we need to like explain ourselves anymore because we talked about, you know, this topic a lot early on. So the mechanics of the game are we're just going to rate ourselves from zero to three. And zero would be not true at all. Number one would be rarely true. Number two would be usually true. And number three would be the truest of true. Or always true. All right, so let's begin with the game. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so Salita and Tayo, we have 10 statements, and we just want to see if it is not at all true, sometimes true, usually true, or always true. So are we going to say the answer at the same time? Mm, we could. Yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, so number one, we have very few shared interests or times that we enjoy being together. So very few shared interests, okay? Rate ourselves in three, two, one, zero. Sometimes true. Huh? I thought rarely, like, not true. Not true at all? Very few shared interests? We have a lot of things that we like. Oh, okay. I misunderstood the question. So, yeah, Bonizi got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I suck at this game. Next ah, question. Ah, fail. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Staying together is not a priority for me or my partner. In three, two, one. one. Not true. Zero. Oh. <laughs> okay, the only reason I say that, of course, I would love to be with Bonizi forever. Okay. That's why we got married. But hey. Um, like you said, we enjoy our nothing time. Nothing is impossible, right? Halatang klingi talaga ako. Nothing is impossible. So what are you saying? I'm saying that nothing is impossible. Ah. Right? I'm looking at you from the side of my eye. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. What if I know, um, one of us goes over to the dark side? Hello? Umpugin kaya kita. Hindi, sinasabi ko lang na, di ba? Anyway, <laughs> I would like for that not to happen. Okay. It's, Next question. All right, number three. Flirting with others appeals to me. So does being with other partners. Rate ourselves in three, two, one. Zero. Zero. Yeah. Ha. Ha. Flirting does appeal to me, to, a, to us in a certain yeah. way because we talked about that in the flirting episode. But when it pertains to being with other partners... Then it's a zero because we're commit. I'm committed to Bonizi. I don't know if she's committed to me. I am completely committed to you, Fofo. I'm just fishing. Anyway, next question. <laughs> okay, in my gut, I don't see my partner as a truly good person. Three, two, one, <laughs> zero. Sometimes true. <laughs> Okay, so about our fight the other day, I just have to give a backstory. When Mikael got upset that I didn't, you know, I wasn't completely honest, he said to me, you're not a good person. <laughs> he was so frustrated and so upset that he was like, you're not a good person. I told her that because she chose herself rather than being a better person. Yeah. So... <laughs> Judging from recent events, I have to say one, <laughs> which is sometimes true. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in fairness to myself, I'm not a zero, so there are yeah. many times that I'm not a good person. It's okay. Like, it's on my phone. Be better. Okay. All right. The next one. Okay. We have a hard time talking over differences constructively. Three, two, one. Point one. five. Very rarely true. Ako one, sometimes true. I think that comes from my end, the man, because sometimes I have a hard time expressing myself. Or sometimes I'm yeah. too, like, aggro yeah. about it. Like, w- well, me naman, I, I think we've improved so much on that part that that's why it's a 0.5. Oh. Hmm. Okay, next. Okay, I'd rather not talk about what bothers me than risk getting into arguments about it. Three, ah, two, one. Zero. One. Oh my God, I'm a one. I would say you're like a 1.5 to two. Probably. Okay, next question. I still resent some of the hurtful things my partner has said or done in the past. Three, two, one. Negative 10. Zero. Ah, negative 100. Okay, gotcha. There's no resentment at all. Yeah, there's none. There's none. There's none. Like, definitely we learn from each other when we have our down moments. Although I really got hurt when you said, na malaki yung pangako. I'm kidding. She never said that. She loves my jaw. I love it. I love your, ano, tuna panga. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just joking. Anyway, next question. There are things in our life, in our relationship, that have made us extremely upset and we still don't talk about these experiences. Three, two, one. Negative, Negative 10. Negative mil- one million. Yeah. No. Definitely we talk about Dude. everything and yeah. anything that maybe makes us happy or upset. So there isn't anything that we don't talk about with yeah. each other. I think this podcast is a zero to that question. <laughs> we talk about everything on the we podcast. We talk about everything. Okay. Next, I rarely feel playful or joyful about my relationship. When I look ahead about a future, I feel bleak. Okay, that's sad. That is a sad statement. This is like negative, negative, that's like, negative. I'm not even going to answer that. I think they can answer that for us. Obviously, you guys know the answer to that. <laughs> and then the last one is, I rarely express affection, appreciation, or gratitude towards my partner. I find myself feeling irritated towards them. Negative, negative, okay, negative. Okay, whoever wrote these questions, no, Oh, you know why? Because this, okay, this quiz is the falling out of love warning sign. Oh, no wonder. Quiz. Oh, okay. So obviously, we're not falling out of love with each other, and we passed. Okay, gotcha. We you passed. You are truly, madly, <laughs> deeply in love with Bonizi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because that was a downer. Like, the first half of the questions were fun. And then the last half was like, this is depressing. What's Akala, wrong with this quiz? Akala mo fun. Hindi <laughs> nga. Yun yung point it's of the yun game. It's hindi fun. It's a falling out of love quiz. So oh if God. feeling mo na you scored a lot of points, then, you know, time to reflect. Time to probably discuss with your partner, di ba? So, tayo, at least, buti na lang negative. So, yeah. balikan na lang natin tong quiz when we have troubles. And speaking of stoking the fire of love, before we end, I would like to remind, no, I would like to tell Bonizi and surprise her that I ordered gubat. Oh. I ordered our favorite resto for ECQ and I ordered you is that in Buro? Oh, they have Buro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. And on that reaction, we are ending this podcast. I am Fofo. And I'm Bones. Bye, guys. Bye.